um, I just give the summarize. So what strategies are effective so far? One thing is start online public health education on COVID-19 outbreak. I want to you know, emphasize here. So I think that I, especially in this first stage of, you know, of a COVID-19 outbreak, it's very important, I would say imperative, to provide high quality public health education, not psychological health, but public health education for students to say if they got knowledge, they know what to do, they know how to take you know, efficient, effective measures to protect themselves, actually they are less stressful. So this is very important. And also with psychological education about accurate response and coping strategy, we do different lectures. Uh, we do kind of brochures, we do online kind of uh, resources, kind of provider, we're providing all kinds of resources. You know, uh, I think here really knowledge is power. And also use pre-existing online service and you know change face-to-face -face service you know to certain forms of teletherapy. This is I think we're doing all around China, and also provide hotline if possible. If the school, if the university is able to provide hotlines for their students only, which was a you know kind of privilege. But I think that for more universities, it's very hard. It's difficult. Then instead of um, you know doing on hotlines uh, for their own students you know, university probably can actually get some resources of high quality local hotlines that provide this information to the students so that they can use the local resources. And also, I think it's very important is to stay connected with students by all means and try to detect early risk factors, you know, or signals. Because we already observe a, a little bit kind of trend of um, suicidal kind of crisis among Chinese populations. So this is a warning sign. And um, also very important to form work group if it's necessary, especially to deal with high risk cares, cases. I just um, you know, uh, mentioned some of the members uh, that must be included, at least in Fudan University, like students, their parents, student advisors, head of department of you know, student affairs office, mediators, intermediator from the Fudan University Student Counseling Center, and other members if necessary. For instance, if we deal with a um, you know, student who is currently in overseas exchange program, and he or she is in crisis, then we included, you know, the head of foreign affairs, you know, office. Uh, we may include some of the um, representative from the local university program and to form a kind of work group. And the major challenge here is also obvious because COVID-19 is definitely a serious test of how good the pre-existing system is. So, if the pre-existing system, especially the supportive network intervention system is good enough, then, you know, probably will be able to provide good enough service for the students. However, if it is not good enough, you know, you can't expect that it can work you know, under this high level pressure. And also quarantine and social distancing measures, because we take uh, perversive, you know, a massive um, the measures here, and make it more difficult, of course, to coordinate and cooperate in the system. So we have to rely on a lot of inf you know, information exchanges, on lines, uh, uh, using WeChat platform and telephones, and we can't meet students, parents face to face. So of course, it, it should you know, increase in this kind of uh, um, working difficulty, increase the difficulties of um, coordinating and cooperating. Right, so this is really the major challenge.